Since the pension freedoms of 2015, taking money out of a pension has been more flexible than ever. But having more options can lead to confusion and then to inertia. We're just unable to make a decision because we don't understand all of the options available to us. Now, if only there was a place where you find out about this stuff in easy, bite-sized chunks. Hi and welcome back to the channel. My name is Pete Matthew. I'm a chartered financial planner based here in the UK. And I've been putting up videos on YouTube for more than 10 years now, giving you everything you need to know and everything you need to do to secure your financial future. So you're approaching retirement and you're thinking of switching from saving into a pension to taking benefits out. If you have a defined benefit scheme like the NHS or the teacher's pension schemes, your options are going to be limited really to the level of income that you take and how much of it you give up in return for a lump sum. But if you have a defined contribution pension, sometimes called a money purchase scheme, where you're building up a fund of money, then actually you have quite a few options to choose from. So as we're going through this, remember there are chapter markers under the video so you can skip around. And of course, if it's useful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you very much in advance. So I think we need to understand the mechanics of the process of taking money out of a pension and the three main options that you have so that then we can determine which to use in what circumstances. So let's jump onto the computer to look at that first. So let's talk about the process of crystallization. And we need to do that by visualizing three distinct areas or steps of the process. So the first is pre-retirement. This is where your money sits as you are building it up while you're working. Then we've got drawdown, which is just one of the options when it comes to taking money out. And then most importantly, of course, we have your bank account where the money needs to land so that you can spend it. Now, your pension fund is built in the pre-retirement phase while you're working and while you're saving money into your pension. So let's just use an example of a £200,000 pension fund here. And really the process of crystallization is moving that money from left to right, eventually to land in your bank account where you can spend it. And there are three options available for you for crystallizing your pension fund. And the first is called an annuity, which is simply a guaranteed income for life. Now with an annuity, as with all the options for crystallization, you have the opportunity to take 25% of your accumulated pension fund as a tax-free cash lump sum. If you do that, that money moves straight into your bank account, no tax implications, and you can enjoy spending it. With an annuity, the remaining pension fund of 150,000 is spent on buying a guaranteed income for life. You hand your pension fund over to an insurance company and they will guarantee an income for life. Depending on the options you choose when you buy your annuity, that guaranteed income might continue to your spouse if you die first, and it might be indexed, that is rising over time. But crucially, the pension fund has now gone. It is no more. You can't get it back. You have spent it using it to buy that guaranteed income for life. That's an annuity. Next up, we have drawdown more properly called flexi access drawdown, which is why I've called it flexible withdrawals here. And again, we have a 200,000 pound pension fund. We can decide to take 25% tax-free cash. Again, that money moves straight to our bank account, leaving 150,000 pound pension fund behind. And that pot now moves into a drawdown account. It's just another kind of pension account from which we can now begin drawing an income. You can think of this pot as a bucket with a tap on it, and we turn the tap on and draw money off it as we need it. We can do that in ad hoc lump sums. We can do it in regular monthly amounts. And of course, as we draw money out, it's taxable, so we pay tax on it. The pot will grow if it's invested properly, but if it doesn't grow more quickly than we draw out, we will see our pension fund erode. And if we're not careful, eventually it could run out altogether. And that's a danger with drawdown. If we don't manage our withdrawals and our investment carefully, we couldn't end up running out of money altogether. 
So far, we've looked at this as an all or nothing kind of approach, but that's actually not the case. With flexible drawdown, we could just decide to carve off, say, £40,000 of our pension fund and put that into drawdown. Again, we can choose to take 25% of the pot as tax-free cash. And if we do that, that money moves into our bank account and the rest of the pot that we've chosen to put into drawdown moves into the drawdown account, leaving the 160,000 remaining pension fund uncrystallized. From the 30,000 pound pot, we can draw a taxable income until it's gone. And then we can repeat the process, taking more of our pension pot across the lines into drawdown and into our bank account. And then we have UFF Plus, easily the best acronym my profession has ever come up with. And this stands for Uncrystallized Fund Pension Lump Sum. And the clue is in the name there, uncrystallized. So here's our pot, as we've had before, and we can decide to take some of that pot as an UFF Plus. Again, I've chosen £40,000 here to keep the math simple. And we can shift that £40,000 from our uncrystallized pot straight into our bank account. And again, 10000 of that will be tax-free. The other 30000 will be taxable. And so we need to take, in this case, basic rate income tax off the 30000 and we're left with 24000 plus our tax-free cash. So that 40000 has become 34000 and it's gone straight into our bank account. Crucially, it has avoided the drawdown step altogether. So this is a simpler option. If we know we need a lump sum, we can just opt for off plus, take it directly from our pre-retirement pot into our bank account and not bother with the hassle of setting up a separate drawdown account. Okay, hope that was helpful. Now, an annuity first. That's the simplest option here, but it's also the most final. You hand over your pot in return for an income for life. And the question has to be, well, how long is for life? None of us knows how long we've got left on this planet. So if we die early, we may have had a pretty rough deal. Handing a pot of money over and then not getting enough money, no, enough income out in return. Now, you can mitigate this to some extent by choosing a joint life option if we have a partner. Uh, you can also choose a guaranteed option, which pays out for a minimum period, usually 10 years, even if we die before that 10 years is up. The main thing about annuities, though, is that guaranteed income. If you want to ensure you always have the income you need, then you should definitely consider this option. You can shop around for the best annuity rate so that you get the most income for your fund. If you have medical issues that could shorten your life expectancy, you should get a higher income. But the big thing to be aware of here is that your pension fund is gone. So the decision to annuitize is a once for all time decision. It's a really big deal. Now, if you want the freedom to choose how much you draw from your fund and when, then flexi access drawdown is a great option. You get the option to take tax-free cash and what's left can be invested to grow for the future while also being able to provide a taxable, flexible income as and when you need it. Now, as we saw, you can move your entire fund into drawdown in one go, or you can do it in stages, leaving some money uncrystallized and then going into drawdown with a portion of it. And that latter option gives you multiple opportunities to take tax-free cash every time you crystallize a bit more of your fund. This can preserve your pension fund for longer. And this is really beneficial because pension money is outside your estate for inheritance tax purposes. So you can pass this money to your partner or your kids really flexibly. And that's a huge benefit for lots of people. The downside though is that you have to continue to manage the investments and also manage your rate of withdrawal very carefully if you don't wanna erode your pension completely. So there's a layer of complexity to consider here. And complexity also means cost. Although there are some excellent platforms these days that can cope with flexible drawdown plans pretty cheaply. So what about off plus then? Well, the off plus option just avoids the necessity to open and manage a drawdown account. So you can leave the bulk of your fund uncrystallized and just take ad hoc lump sums as you need them. Each lump sum will be 25% tax-free cash and 75% taxable. Basically, that's about it. If your retirement income needs are met by other sources, such as state pensions, company schemes, rental income maybe, 
and you only really need to dip into your pension fund occasionally, then you can save the cost and hassle of managing a drawdown account by simply choosing Off Plus each time you need some money out. Of course, many people blend these options for an optimum approach to retirement. So they might secure some basic level of income with an annuity and then use flexi access drawdown to top that up. Somebody with a very low tolerance for risk might dread the idea of leaving money invested in a drawdown account and prefer the risk-free nature of annuities. Most people's income changes throughout retirement. So maybe they retire on one company scheme, and then another one kicks in five years later, so they get a bit more income. And then their state pension a couple of years after that, so they get a bit more. The flexibility of the pension options now means that you can then tailor the process of taking money out of your pension funds to suit your specific circumstances, dialing it up and down as you need. One final thought, I always say that most people can get through life without needing to seek professional financial advice. But I also believe that anybody can benefit from walking through these options with a qualified professional financial planner. And that person can build a tailor-made solution for you and your unique circumstances. And if it's done right, that can free you up to just get on with living, giving you the peace of mind to know that the best choices have been made. Now, this is a really big subject, and I feel like we've only really dealt with it at a fairly high level here. So if you've got any questions, leave a comment. I'll do my best to answer them. And if there's demand, I might do a part two to this video just to take the discussion on a little bit. Okay, if it was useful, you know what to do. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.